Today, we talk about Special Box Day. All right. Oh. Hold on to your butts. Oh, God damn it. The trusty screwdriver. Don't forget your trusty box opener. Dead fun. Uh, you know what it is. Kobe! Woo. Can you feel the tension in the air right now? I know I can. Okay. Y'all ready for this? Dun, 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 And up. Step aside. Look alive. Look alive. Look alive. Ah! Uh. Uh. Wow. Holy crap. Okay, time out. All right, so let me give you guys a visual of the box because there's a good chance you won't see visuals like this on a box like this anytime soon. But uh, boom, quick shots, quick shots. Give you the right way, boom, boom. Boom, boom. On the go three. Not sure what the three is. On the go crush proof brands. And then the size label. I am praying. I have not tried these on. There's literally, it would have been impossible to anyway. Uh, but I am praying these fit me because I want a full size down in these, hoping that they are structured just like Air Force Ones. Uh, but anyway, um, needless to say, very rare shoe. Uh, numbers quoted as being somewhere less than 252, maybe 222, who knows? Who is to know? Um, but a very fascinating story behind this pair of sneakers, which is why I decided to get them. Let's uh, open them up, shall we? Oh. So, of course, the first thing you have to notice right off the bat, the way it opens, and of course, the way the box looks, it's like a pair, a pair, it's a pair of Newports. Shout out to all the pair. Uh, it's like a pack of Newport cigarettes. So you open it up, you get that tin foil like in a cigarette, um, which opens up and, oh my God. Oh my God. What? Holy cow. I mean, bruh. Bruh. What? If you know, you know. But uh, no, nah, we, uh, we'll get into some details, but I just want to give you all some uh, quick 4K shots. Gum bottom. Ari, what up? Very interesting outsole pattern, huh? Huh? <laughs> Air Force One much? Ari. Uh, clearly heavy, heavy influence from the swoosh and more specifically the Air Force One. Not a surprise there. White laces, menthol tens written in there. A little difficult to see, but it is what it is. Very interesting, you know, mesh pattern coupled with leathers. Um, what is this? This is, yeah, this is all leather, yeah. All leather, perforated toe box, Air Force One AF. Very nice stitching, not gonna lie. I don't see a lot of quality defects, but again, I'm not the perfect person to talk to about quality because it's not one of my biggest priorities for sneakers. I'll be honest with you. It's not what I'm looking for when I'm looking at sneakers. Um, but some other things to show you. Interestingly, it came with this lovely poster. Well, not even a poster. It's like one of those portrait things that uh, your mom hangs in the house. Indulge yourself. I'm gonna give you guys a full picture view of that. Ah! But yeah, this is uh, very fascinating to me. Um, you know, it's, uh, I haven't even looked at this fully. Let me see. So clearly a promo ad they did for the sneakers. After all, if you're not gonna binge, why bother? And this also gets into the story behind the shoe, which is one of the main reasons I got it to begin with and spent so much damn money on it. Um, 
Uh, they only made sizes 8 to 13, whole sizes only, so no half sizes. Contains 29 milligrams of Fiend and 1.2 milligrams of Hate. Interesting. Ari, quality goods for tasteless needs. Okay, Ari. Okay. Very interesting. But yeah, a lovely display piece, especially for those that you know clearly buy these as uh, collector's items and not uh, sneakers for rock. But it is very obvious that these were constructed with uh, artwork in mind over anything. Uh, this, uh, the left pair coming with a nice chain. Not two chains, but just one. And this has been torn, unfortunately, which is a real shame. Oh, maybe not. Okay. So the tags, this has been torn, but I'll show you what I can. The tag came like this for the shoe, menthol tens. I can get it to focus, and then it had this, uh, it had Ari's signature, and this is how he proved authenticity with the, uh, with the shoe. He signed across the cards that said, stay focused, and uh, the sticker and the above signature are proof these goods were in my hands. Everything else is fake, asterisk, but if the fakes look good, fuck it, cop them. Right from the box. So I love the attitude associated with this pair of sneakers. It's unfortunate that this Tag has kind of rubbed off some of the uh, signature, but I'll just put it on the back, put it back in the box so we don't lose that. But yeah, let's talk about it, shall we? <coughs> now, Sneaker Deuce had recently done a fantastic video on Ari, the creator of these shoes, and I'd encourage you all to watch that if you haven't already. Uh, really allows him to kind of, from a first person perspective, the first person perspective, give you the whole story, which is great. Some of the key things that really caught my attention. Um, first of all, at eight years old, seeing Vans. Not this Vans, this being the most iconic Vans possibly of all time, the uh, checkered Vans slip-on. Uh, that was not sanitary. Um, but yeah, just the influence of seeing these when he was eight years old and the fact that you could just walk in and customize your Vans. He had never seen anything like that with sneakers and that's what really started his love for sneakers, which is obviously a very important piece of this story. Then, next piece of this story. Back in the day when these shoes were being created, uh, there it was unheard of to kind of just branch off away from Nike, Adidas, and Puma. And so he took inspiration from what Nego had done with Bape and the Bapesta. Bada boom, this in my opinion being the best Bapester of all time. And you know you will leave. Uh, but yeah, so Nego breaking the mold and saying, you know what, I'm going to just do it myself and build it, they will come, is, uh, is the quote used. So uh, that's what he decided to do. So those two influences led to bada boom, and here we is today, among many other things. So let's just kind of go into some of the interesting details that really pushed me over the edge to buying the shoe. On the other thing too, just everything I've been going through lately with uh, the latest sneaker purchases and, and additives to my collection, I just figured, you know, this had to be included with, especially with this whole motto of indulge yourself, is just calling back to this addiction and this, high that you get from uh, sneaker collecting, especially amazing gems like this. So, you know, as part of all that, this just had to be included with my uh, whole collection and voila. First of all, I had seen this shoe probably a year or two ago and I was thinking about pulling the trigger on them, but I just couldn't justify doing it and then they just ended up disappearing at Flight Club. So, lost out and I figured, you know what, it's probably for the best. Then Sneaker News put out that little story with Ari himself explaining the inspirations behind the shoe and that's when I was like, you know what, I just have to do this. Especially with the massive sneakers I've now accumulating to kind of help build this collection that kind of curates the history of sneakers, I felt like this held enough regard in sneaker history that it had to be copped and here we is. So one of, one of the key things is knowing uh, the inspirational models that led to it, which we just discussed. Secondly, uh, the limited nature of the shoe led me to get it. Not because I wanted to have a limited sneaker, but because I knew if I didn't get them now, there was a good chance I would never be able to get them again. So, you know, it is The other thing, it's, it, it is a great looking shoe. I mean, gum bottom first off, lots of whites and lots of interesting greens that really resemble that menthol mentality that smoking cigarette high mentality, which is really what Ari's message was with these sneakers was, first off, obviously the logo being a Newport-esque logo that when reversed looks like Nike's logo. Illuminati AF. Uh, but secondly, the fact that a lot of the business practices with Nike correlates with cigarettes, meaning you gotta get your fix. Sneakerheads gotta get that high from getting a new pair of sneakers. 
Am I right? And around that theme, he built this shoe. And of course, Nike couldn't co-sign anything like this. Of course, he got sued out the ass. And just what impressed me was his foresight into seeing that and planning for that appropriately. He could have approached it so nonchalantly and just like a pure artist, meaning no regard for consequences and just going for the pure art of it all, which, you know, in the end, it's good that he didn't because uh, with all the lawsuits and everything, I'm sure that could have destroyed him. And to know he put in $15,000 worth of legal fees, let alone the cost of production of the shoes, to create such a powerful message that all these years later instills all this warranted resale value, I think is absolutely beautiful. And, and the care and attention he, he had for these stitching details, for the colorway selection, for the theme behind the shoe. And, uh, and in another Sneaker News interview, he. Uh, his good friend Espo, who came up in their graffiti era, uh, you know, these are pure artists. These are real life modern artists. And their art form may vary from classical pieces of art, but they are our modern day artists. And to know that they were taken seriously by a brand like Nike way back when, when, you know, it wasn't the norm to be associated with artists from a footwear and athletic brand company, it was incredible to see that those kinds of guys were getting chances at, you know, blending their talents with a company like Nike. But then to see the frustration that they had verbalized with their recent interviews and that being the impetus along with everything else to, to result in an independent project that could give you something this good just goes to show how remarkable of a piece of art this truly is and its significance in sneaker culture. And at the end of the day, you know, it perfectly makes sense why from a corporate level this cannot exist, but from a pure art piece perspective, this is just... How can you say anything bad about this? You simply can't. There's nothing bad to say about this sneaker. It ain't what it ain't. Um, so yeah, I mean, I, I don't want to go into too much more detail. I, I just wanted to show you all the all the details as, as best I could. You know, and I don't want to go into it in too much more detail. It's been discussed at length. The creator himself has discussed it at length. Really nothing I want to step on toes for as far as that story, but just some of those key features that really caught my attention with the shoe and, and what really led me to say, hey, you know what? It's settled. I got to find these things. And uh, I'm glad I was able to, and I hope they fit. But uh, regardless, I'm not going to be wearing them anytime soon. We'll, we'll see at what occasion it warrants these being pulled out. But with that said, uh, let me know if you have any questions about the shoe. Uh, again, check out Sneaker News and Ari's interview there. Uh, really remarkable story. We'll see you on the next one. We out.